Thank you for checking out this No Spoilers movie review. This is for the 2017 film release Jigsaw, which, yes, is the eighth film in the Saw franchise. The eighth. No, it wasn't a reboot, and a lot of people didn't understand what it was going to be when they were working on it, when they had originally, uh, uh, originally, sorry, rough morning, when they originally started uh, had the title put out there. It was called Saw Legacy, and that was just kind of the working title. So then they just ended up calling it Jigsaw, and people were like, is this a reboot? Is this, you know, still in this long-running story? Long-running story. Um, so overall, I think it got very bad reception, but to be honest, I didn't think it was that bad. I really didn't. But, I, you know, I'll, I'll talk about my thoughts on it. And like I said, no spoilers. So there are some things I kind of want to say about this, but I can't say about this because with all my reviews, I don't want to have spoilers in it because I want this to be open to everyone. You know, everyone can watch this. <clears throat> so I watched this on Hulu, just so everyone knows. So if you're watching this, uh, when I post the review or close to when I post the review, it should be available on Hulu if you have it. So you can go ahead and watch it. I originally had interest in seeing this film when it came out in 2017. But I was just like, eh, I don't know, because I was one of those people, I was a huge fan of the first Saw movie, I really liked the second one as well, the third one I was like, it's still fine, the fourth one I enjoyed, and then the fifth one I hated, the sixth one I was like, meh, and the seventh one I was also like, meh. So I was one of those people who was very much exhausted with the Saw franchise, so it's, I think it's good that they let a lot of time pass before they did another one, but I know there's still a lot of people like myself who kind of saw, oh, there's a there's a Saw co film coming out now, and people just rolled their eyes, because I definitely rolled my eyes. But I will say that Tobin Bell is in this, like, he's in every single one in, in varying ways, um, so that doesn't give anything away, because you don't know in what way, if you've seen any other Saw films, you know he's in there in, in many different ways. So um, I had met him about two years ago when the film, before the film came out, but not, it was like a month or so before it came out. And I remember talking to him about it, being like, what's the film going to be like? What are your feelings on it? And he was like, you know, I think it's a pretty good update for now. And it can kind of carry things into the future, doing its its own thing, but like staying with the Saw franchise at the same time. So he was very positive about it. But then again, like, you know, he's involved with it. So I was like, I don't really know what to think, but. Nice guy, by the way, Tobin Bell. Very nice guy. And he's a very good actor, I think. Underrated, in my opinion, especially in the Saw films. He does an outstanding job. But he's been in other stuff like, what was the, um, what, The Firm. The movie The Firm. He was in The Firm. A lot of people forget that. And my favorite role of his, actually, he was in X-Files. There was one episode of him in X-Files that was awesome. And he did such an amazing job. But anyway, uh, let me talk more about this Jigsaw uh, so the writers for this one were Josh Stolberg and Pete Goldfinger, and they had written films before. They're like a, a team that writes scripts together. They had written uh, Sorority Row. I think it was like a 2009 film. I haven't seen that one. I didn't hear anything really good about it or anything. And Piranha 3D, which I did see, and I actually saw it in the theater because it was directed by Alexander Aja, and I do like Alexander Aja because of his, his film High Tension, and then his remake of The Hills Have Eyes, I thought, was quite good. Um, Piranha 3D was just like, you know, it was fun. I, I, I kind of liked its tongue-in-cheek uh, along with the gore. So I thought it was successful for what that was supposed to be, but that's a whole other review. So these, these guys, uh, Josh Stolberg and Pete Goldfinger, pitched the idea for this. And apparently Lionsgate had kind of been in the in a holding pattern on Saw films, just saying we're not going to do one unless someone comes to us and has an idea that we think is a good idea to carry it forward. Because after the sixth film, they didn't like how poorly it had performed. So they were had already said that they would do the seventh film, and apparently the seventh film was supposed to be a two-parter. But they were just like, no, after the poor performance of the sixth film, you get one film to end it on the seventh, and then we're going to be done unless someone comes up with a really good idea. So they felt like this was a really good idea, so they were like, all right, let's do this. It's been some years. Um, so they went forward. The directors for it were Michael and Peter Spyrig, who people might know some of the other films they've directed. Undead was one. That was kind of like the first one that broke them onto... Um, I mean, that kind of like broke their careers, got them into Hollywood, which I've seen 
I'm pretty sure I've seen it and thought it was decent. Um, then they did Daybreakers uh, with, I think that had Ethan Hawke in it. I think it had Ethan Hawke, or maybe I'm getting confused because they also did Predestination, which had Ethan Hawke in it. Uh, he might be in both of them, I can't remember. It's been a while. I haven't watched Predestination. I have watched Daybreakers. I thought Daybreakers was pretty solid. And then they also directed the film Winchester, which was the year after they did Jigsaw. So, yeah. Uh, the budget for this was actually $10 million, and it ended up making $103 million in the box office. So... Lionsgate had to be pretty happy with that. They were like, all right, we took a chance on letting the Saw thing happen again. And look, we actually made some money on this one. Decent money. So that's nice. And and a profit margin of that for a horror film, pretty good, I think. Because pe I feel like studios don't ex expect a whole lot profit-wise out of horror films. You know? Uh, so, this, so the film actually is supposed to take place 10 years after the... Sorry, I'm getting confused with the numbers here. The seventh film. Oh my god, there was just so many. Yes, so ten years after the seventh film is when it happens. Uh, so one of the things that occurred to me initially from this um, is that the first trap that they introduced the, the movie with, uh, the first game, the first trap in the game, is uh, a reuse like it, it's it's totally cribbed from another movie I think it was the fifth movie actually and I was just kind of like I hope that's not how this is going to be where it's like very uninspired and they're just kind of like recycling traps and just making like little changes but it's almost the same trap and that happens a little bit throughout the film but you also do get some new traps so that's good my only thing with this is that if you're going to do another Saw film, if you're going to do the eighth Saw film, and it's been a while, and you're reintroducing this to people saying, hey, let's give this another go, I feel like all the traps, all the kills need to be fresh. Because that's one of the big things that pulls, pulls people in. Because who are you trying to get with this? You're not trying to get someone who's never seen the Saw films before. You're pandering to the people who are Saw fans. So they've seen it all. So if you show them some of the same stuff, they're going to roll their eyes and be like, seen this before, because that's what that's mainly what's going to keep people coming back for these Saw films. It's not necessarily the story, although I actually thought the story was not bad for this one. Um, it's, it's those kills. Like, that's what's going to put people in those seats in the theater, because they're going to assume that the story's not going to be that great. Because when you keep going with more films in a franchise like this, people keep assuming that the story's not going to be that good. So what's going to get them there? The kills. Keeping the kills fresh and interesting, that's what's going to get them there. So I think if they're doing another one, and they are, <laughs> and I'm going to talk about that a little bit more at the end of this, uh, fresh, all fresh, please. You, you got to do that. That's what's going to keep people coming back, in my opinion. Um, so... One thing that I it started making me think about during it, like, is, is just my mind wanders sometimes when I'm watching these movies because I have, like, these odd questions that pop up in my head. So I started thinking, like, where do they just get all these materials? Like, when the games are set up, it's just, like, there's all these materials. Some of them you're just like, oh, that's, like, junk. They just get it at a junkyard or something. But, like, some of the stuff's a little more specialized than that, and you're kind of like, how do you just get that if you're – Killing people and trying not to get caught, you know, it's, I don't know, it's kind of weird. Uh, I like how people get badly injured in this. They're in pain for like a few seconds, and then they're pretty much fine. And that's one of the things in general that I have a problem with with horror films. It's very unrealistic where people can take a lot of abuse, have very bad injuries, and then just be like, oh, God, and like scream for like a few seconds. And then like it cuts to the next scene and they're just like, okay, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm good. And that's at play in this film. And that, that always gets me like at this point, I kind of like accept it because it happens a lot in horror films, but at the same time, it's still so ridiculous. Um, I'm glad they went for the most part with practical effects in this film because when they do have CG and they do have a little bit of CG in it, the CG does not look good. And especially because you're using a lot of practical effects in it that look good, and then you use the CG, it's never going to look as good as the practical effects, especially practical effects that are done well. So it's just, 
it's one of those things I want to see practical effects all the time. I understand why they did some of the CG because it would be, it would have been too hard to do practical effects wise. And there is a CG portion at the very end that I thought was actually not bad. But all the rest of the CG in it, I thought was bad. It looked bad in comparison to the practical effects. So I kind of feel like for the most part, you kind of have to pick one and don't pick CG because it almost always sucks. So I guess what I'm trying to say is just do practical effects or go ahead and just do all CG and I'll just crap on the film because you, you chose wrong. Um, there's a portion of this that speaks to the true crime obsession phenomenon. So it is kind of like one of these social commentary films. Uh, all the Saw films have have done that for the most part. They they make these kind of social commentaries, which, you know, that's, that's horror genre in general, tends to do a lot of that. And I felt like for 2017, this did a pretty decent job of making a few of those um, comments. And uh, one of those in there is kind of like the true crime obsession phenomena. And uh, one, of the, one of the things about that is it's kind of like, for me personally, like, you can be interested in true crime, and that's fine. Like, I am. I listen to a lot of podcasts and, and watch documentaries and stuff like that. But it's stepping over the line when people are becoming obsessed with the killers themselves and start to kind of look at them as, I don't want to say, like, idols or role models, but look at them as, like, celebrities in a sense. And from what I hear that the most recent like Ted Bundy film with Zac Efron in it was a little too much of that where it's like a fandom type thing with a killer as opposed to presenting the facts. And this is a terrible thing, you know what I mean? So I just can't get into the whole fandom around killers. I think that's sick and messed up and um, not people to be idolized. Absolutely not. And that stuff is at play in a lot of the Saw films, to be honest, because you have people throughout the franchise who are um, kind of acolytes of uh, Jigsaw. So it kind of ties in. Uh, then there's a portion that mirrors some iconic portions. I don't want to use portions too much, but I'm going to... There are portions of this film that, that mirror iconic portions of the very first Saw film. So I think that's kind of interesting, but kind of stupid at the same time. You know what I mean? Where it's like, oh, I recognize that. Like, that's a total callback from the first one. But then it's kind of like, mm, we've gone a far way. Do you really need to be doing that right now? It, it seems more like pandering in a sense. Uh, but not a big deal. I thought the twists in this were pretty solid. Um, not bad, really. I heard a lot of people really didn't like the film. But to be honest, like I said in the beginning, like I thought it was fine. Like, it's not a bad film. I thought they tried pretty hard. Um, I said, uh, I think it was not bad because what else can you do with a Saw film? You can't do anything too different. And that's kind of the problem. Going into a film like this, okay, the, the first thing people would say is don't make another Saw film. Okay. But then when you accept the fact that they're making another Saw film, what do you do with it? How do you continue that storyline? Or do you? Like, do you reboot it? People hate reboots for the most part. So I would say definitely don't reboot it. Do you stick with the storyline? I think you kind of have to stick with the storyline because it's this, this this weird situation where, like, if you don't stick with the storyline, you try to do something too different, people are going to call it out and be like, oh, well, it, it barely even fits into the franchise. You, I don't even know how you can call it a Saw film. But then if you go the opposite direction and you make it too much like all the other material, then people are like, oh, well, you're just doing the exact same thing. There's nothing new here. What's wrong? Um, so it's this very fine line that you really have to walk if you're going to write this script. Now, given that, I actually think that the writers did a, did quite a good job for those confines. Um, there is that argument to make, should they have made it at all? Uh, but I think when you just accept the premise that it, it is made and, it, and you know, these things will continue to be made, you then have to temper your expectations in a sense and think what should they do and did they execute what they should do if they're actually doing another installment in this franchise so i actually think they did a good job with that so you know but you know you guys have opinions go ahead and put it in the comments did you think differently have you not seen it yet but you will check it out i would say check it out if you're a saw fan definitely just check it out just to know i will say this i think i liked it more than five i think i liked it more than six that's good well, did I? 
I think so. It's been a long time. I'm sorry. Seven also. I only saw Seven once. I don't even remember. I saw it in the theater in in 3D. That was dumb. But, um, yeah, I think it was better, potentially better than Seven as well, actually. So the final line in this, there there is a final line of dialogue before the movie ends. That final line of dialogue is terrible. <laughs> that is one thing that I was just, I, I laughed at it. I was just like, this is... That's a bad line of dialogue. They shouldn't have even had any dialogue. To be honest, it would have been more impactful if if there was no dialogue to end it because that, that line was terrible. You, you know what I mean if you've seen it. So be ready for the ninth film. I already told you they're going to do a sequel to this one, so that'll be the ninth installment in this Saw franchise. And, um, I mean, there are some places they can go with it, but might get kind of tough. So I will say that they're going to have these same writers re returning, which makes me feel like I am more interested to see it knowing that because I thought they handled it pretty well for this one. So I'd be interested to see where they think this should go next. Um, it's not going to be the same directors. The Spyro brothers are not going to be doing it, but they're going to bring back Darren Lynn Bozeman, who directed a bunch of the Saw franchise. So that's kind of cool. Um, obviously, he knows how to get the right look. He knows how to direct these to be Saw films. So that's kind of a cool thing. And then there's a weird thing where Chris Rock, yes, the comedian slash actor Chris Rock is going to be involved with this. And I think he's in like a production role. He's going to be a producer. And I read, I don't know if this is true or not. I read that he's going to provide the story. And then the, the other guys are going to write the script. I don't know. It's weird. And I was reading this thing, like interview with Chris Rock, where he was saying that like, He's been a huge fan of the Saw franchise from the first film and blah, 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 blah. So it's one of these things where, like, you hear this and you're just like, that doesn't make sense that that person would be involved. But he's typecast as, like, a comedy guy. Maybe he really knows his horror stuff. I mean, look at um, look at someone like uh, Jordan Peele. You know, he was looked at as, when, when people heard he was going to do a horror film, uh, Get Out, people were just like, He's a comedy guy. He, he did Key and Peele. It's all sketch comedy. And, like, he's great. He's funny. We all like him. But how is that going to translate to horror? So, But it did. He, he's been outstanding. So, I don't know. I guess we'll just give it a shot. That's the only thing you can do. Um, but I, I'll, I'll see the ninth one. I probably will. It might be another situation like this one where I get to it when I get to it. I'm not going to go see it in the theater or anything because I'm not that enthused about it. But I'll get to it eventually. So uh, I will do my star rating. I'm sorry, I forgot to do a star rating on my review for The Bird with the Crystal Plumage. If you watch that, it was, would have been a four star, by the way. So anyway, uh, so for this movie, it's Jigsaw, the 2017 Jigsaw, uh, five stars in play half with half stars in play for out of five stars. Um, I'm going to give it a... I'm going to give it a three. I'm going to go with three. Uh, solid enough, and I think I thought about giving it a two and a half and just putting it solidly in the middle, but I think when you think about the confines of expectations with the film and the fact that it is still in that soft franchise and is carrying the story forward, um, what can they do with it? So I'm going to give it that half star bump because I thought they handled that aspect well. So tempering expect expectations, you know. But anyway, thank you for checking out this review. Um, Put your comments down there. Have you seen this? What are your thoughts? Um, I'm always interested to hear what people have to say about it. Also, what are your favorite Saw films? Uh, for everyone, it probably should be the first one, but you can throw a few out there and we'll see. Uh, hit that subscribe if you can, please. That's your way to repay me. I don't make money on this. It's just something uh, for fun to put out there. So repay me by hitting that subscribe. It literally takes you a second. Totally painless. But thanks for checking this video out regardless. And until next time, keep it brutal.